basketball fun fact. Did you know that the first basketball goals were actually bushel baskets? Well, now you know. It's jaw time with Mr. Mayberry. Time to draw. Hi, I'm Mr. Mayberry. Welcome to Draw Time with Mr. Mayberry, Fall Time Edition. It's harvest week on draw time, so we're drawing things that have to do with the fall harvest. Today I'm going to show you how to draw a bushel basket. So let's get started. It's time to draw. Okay, I have my paper turned horizontal, and I'm just using a regular pencil to draw. I'm going to start right here in the middle. And I'm actually going to start with the top of the basket. I'm going to start, come down from the top about this far, and I'm going to make an ellipse or an oval, just a curved line up and a curved line down. Looks like a football without the air in it or an eye, that kind of a shape. So this is the top opening of the basket. Remember when you start off drawing, draw lightly because we'll be changing things as we go along. And it's a lot easier to erase lines if they're not drawn too dark to begin with. So do that. Okay, now this uh, basket itself has a rim around it and so I'm going to draw two short lines that come down from the top and then a curve that matches or is parallel with this curve up here at the top so it follows the same goes the same direction and the same has the same curve to it okay and then I'm going to continue that on the inside but now it goes away from us so it gets a little bit smaller and so I'm going to start up a little higher here and make it just make it a little narrower than this band in the front. So I'll curve around like this. Something like that. Now you see bushel baskets are reused har and still are in places for harvest and certain things more than others. Um, but you also see them used as decoration in the in the fall as well. It holds a bushel, that's why they call it a bushel basket. So a bushel is a measurement of the weight, the dry weight or the the amount. Okay, that's the uh, this is going to have a curved bottom. Now there are some that have like a um, they're more like a cylinder. This one actually has a curve to the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here. I'm going to come in from the edge and draw a line that that slants down. Let's do that on either side. And we'll just we'll build this as we go. I'm going to start go down a little farther and I'm making an, there's another band that holds the center part of the basket together. And it has a curve here that follows the same curves above. I want to go out past the end on each side just a little because this band wraps all the way around and this is going to make it look like it does that. So I come down a little and then I'll make a short line like we did here above and it slants the same direction as this line that we have right here, the vertical line. And then there's a curve here that follows the same curve that was above. So both these lines curve the same direction and they both follow the same curve that we have up here is the idea. They're wrapping around the basket. By doing that it makes the basket look more three-dimensional. If we were just to draw straight lines it would look very flat. but That makes it look more 3D. Then, like I said, it's going to be rounded. I'm going to come down here below this just a little in away from the edge so it looks that, like that band sticks out. And then the bottom is going to curve curve down and over and then back up. And it does have a curve to it, whereas, like I said, some of the bushel baskets, they're more like a maybe a drinking cup or a cylinder, where even though they slant in, they, the edge is very much like a cylinder. This, this curves at the bottom.
you'll see these baskets a lot in orchards as well. They, that's one of the places they use them to harvest. Okay, um, let's make their there's slats. They're going vertically, so let's draw those. It's, uh, let's start with the middle, and let's put one just a little off-center. It's going to start wider at the top and, and get narrow as it goes down. Not a lot, but a little bit. And we're going to make it go all the way to the bottom. So we start here, and you stop when you get to this band, and then you go down below like that. Okay, and what happens down here at the bottom is these strips like this, they all connect at the bottom of the basket. So they actually, when they build these, they start at the bottom with all these strips and then they lift them up to make the shape of the basket put in, work within the hoops. And Okay, uh, let's do another one right here. It starts... Now this is where it's going to start wider. They're all gathering to the same central spot in the, at the bottom. So this slants in. So you get this long V shape. Right here. That's a gap between the slats here. And then there's a, another... The other edge of the band is here. And it slants down to the bottom like that. Follows this curve down here, but it's again it's a flat edge that's wrapped around, so it goes like that. And I think I'm just going to continue these off to the right first. Again, another gap that gets narrower as it goes down. And the other side of this band. And then we have room for another one to start here. So, gap starts wider and then gets narrow as it goes down. And then we just use the same edge that we have here for that one. Okay, so that's around one side of the basket. Now I'm going to work my way around the other side to the other side. So I leave a gap here and slant down. And then connect down here. The other side of this slat starts off wider, gets a little bit narrow as it goes down. Same thing. I'm just going to keep repeating this process until I complete this side of the basket. And here. You don't see as much of the slat here on the outside. You see this this gap here. Okay. So there's that. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the inside. I want to make it look like the slats go down on the inside. There's nothing in this basket at the moment. You could put stack up apples or um, peaches or something else in this basket. But for now I'm just going to leave it open and empty. So same kind of thing. You have a slat and then a gap, a slat and a gap, a slat and a gap. You have to remember too in the center the lines are going to be more straight up and down. As they go around the edges they're going to curve. That gap's a little bit that slat was too narrow. I'm going to make it a little wider. Another good reason to have draw lightly is because if you make a mistake, it's a lot easier to correct it if you've drawn lightly. Okay, and then on the inside, I'm going to add just a little bit of shading here just to make sure people know that that does go down inside. You could draw lines this way even. It's just a little bit of shading. Okay, and some shading in between the in the gaps here between the slats, a little bit of shading there. 
Okay, and then the last feature that we need on the basket are handles. Carry it with, so I'm going to make them about that wide, that one there. They'll kind of slant in a little bit towards the top, and then the line for the top edge of the handles. These would be wire handles on this wooden basket. One there, and then one over here. This one's going to be on the outside. I think it goes over outside and inside, but this is looks like it's on more on the outside. So these are directly across from each other, so that's the idea. And you want this line to be a little darker so we can see it over the other behind it. Okay, I'm going to sharpen these lines up just a little bit, make them a little, make them a little clearer to see. Okay, and then the table, I'm going to set it on a table, or actually this could just be the ground and maybe there's a edge of a wall back here. And I'm going to add a little shading so that the basket stands out from the ground, the surface. Okay, so clean up any extra stray lines you have, any smudges. You can add color if you like. And this is our drawing for today, a bushel basket. Now that you know how to draw a bushel basket, why not invent your own game? Thanks for taking time to draw with me. I hope you'll come back again, and remember, if you want to be a good artist, do a little drawing every day. That's beautiful. Yes! Around here we call that bringing in the harvest.